Welcome. In this class, we would understand the various models of circulation and the concept of Rossby waves. Now, when we talk about models of circulation, we must be clear about the patterns of air circulation. We have already talked about those in the previous lectures. Now, if I start with the very fundamental, I can say it is a modification of land and sea breeze because when we talk about land and sea breeze, we understand those at a micro level. However, when we try to understand the same phenomena at a macro level, we would talk about the models of circulations that exist and today we would be discussing the three major models. Now again if I talk about the globe as such you have the various countries and the continents that exist. Now if you look at the globe clearly you will see that the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere have remarkable differences. The region of northern hemisphere has lot of land mass in contrast to southern hemisphere which is mainly water. Now how does this create a difference? When I talk about north hemisphere I say there is a huge land mass that exists that means there is greater variation of temperature in the north hemisphere in contrast to the south hemisphere where you have a kind of more or less constant or a similar temperature phenomena. Since the, you have the temperature contrast which is less in the south hemisphere, you have a kind of circulation which is much vigorous. So you have a kind of much vigorous circulation that exists in south hemisphere in contrast to the north hemisphere. In the north hemisphere you have the variations in the temperature contrast which leads to decrease in the circum, uh, circumpolar vortex that exists that we would be discussing further as we go around the Rossby waves. Now so this forms the basis of the circulation idea. Now if we talk about the models of circulation we have three models that exist. The first model that was the most prior model that was explained talks about a single cell that means you have just the equator and the pole and what actually happens is the warm air rises from the equator goes up to the pole and then subsides back. So it's a kind of single cell circulation that operates in atmosphere but it was soon realized that this is not the reality variation that exists in our uh, on our earth. Hence, this model was rejected at a very early stage. The next model that was propounded was the model propounded by Headley and this talked about three cell system. The two cells of the north hemis uh, towards the poles and the equator formed the direct cells. However, the mid latitude region formed the indirect cell. Now, how this circulation worked? If we try to understand it briefly, I can say what happened in the tricellular model was you have the thermal contraction that occurs towards the pole. As a result, you have contraction of the air that happens towards the pole and finally you have the uh, convergence at higher altitudes and then you have the lower, uh, lower level you have the divergence of the wind. So you have the upper level which has convergence and the lower level which will show divergence. So that was the basic idea and it explained that the poles and the equator form the thermally direct regions. However, the mid latitude is affected by the variations in the poles and the equator and therefore it forms an indirect cell because it is indirectly, uh, it's not directly affected but it's indirectly affected by the phenomenal changes at the poles and the equator. However, again this model, this tricellular model faced a drawback because what it included mainly was the surface winds. In the previous lectures, we have already talked about the jet streams and the related concepts that's the upper air circulation. What this tricellular model totally ignored was the concept of upper air circulation. Therefore, Palmen in his new model talked about another concept that was where he tried to include the concept of upper winds that mainly included 
the jet streams we'll see the formations of jet streams and uh, uh, rossby wave soon so what palmen talked about in his model was the concept of horizontal mixing he said before uh, the concept of palmen all the models focused on air circulation in vertical aspect they missed out the concept of horizontal mixing of air therefore palmen introduced another concept that talked about the horizontal mixing of air and he explained that it's important to have a horizontal mixing of air and this is the main re reason why you have different air masses that exist and the formation of fronts that is that can be very well explained with the palmen's model so his main idea focused on upper wind circulation he focused his ideas on frontal formations or formation of fronts and the horizontal mixing of air and he also ignored any kind of seasonal variations or land sea contrast at, as we have discussed previously which formed the basis of the tricellular model and the single cell model so this was the basic idea that palmen laid down in his convective model or the uh, palmen's it's also known as the palmen's heat convective model now he talked about the upper air circulation he introduced the concept of jet streams now when we talk about the flow of air let's understand what are exactly rossby waves jet streams when we explain are bands of winds that flow in upper atmosphere or upper troposphere and those are more or less parallel in nature however rossby waves are formed due to potential vorticity and the impact of coriolis force and the pressure gradient now what happens actually is you have the uh, air that is flowing through the jet axis or i could say the jet stream but <coughs> excuse me in reality what happens is you have the cold air that pushes the warm air at a time during the winters i would say this becomes strongest as a result there is a huge push from the poles and this push from the poles creates low pressure centers and this is how the original wave gets pinched off and the rossby wave starts to form so this initiates the formation of rossby waves again when we talk about rossby waves you have the highs and the lows the highs are known as the ridges and the lows are known as the trough so that is how you have the basic formation of rossby waves another important thing to know for the rossby waves is if it is persistent it leads to cold uh, anticyclonic area and therefore there would be penetration of the polar area uh, polar air as we explained previously so polar air would push down the warm winds and that would create a region of cold anticyclone as could be seen here so this creates a region of cold anticyclone that exists and penetrates mainly towards the eastern margin of the low latitude so it's mainly towards the eastern margins of the low latitude now moving back onto the circulation patterns as we said that there is a horizontal mixing that exists as per the palmen's model he tried to explain the circulation in terms of low level circulations and the high level circulations so when we talk about the low level circulations it's mainly the circulation takes place towards the equator and the itcz what happens actually is you have the circulation or the air uh, the plane that is tilted poleward as a result you have the western regions or the western sides of the oceans in north hemisphere that are affected uh, and you have the air parcel moving up from the western side and a subsidence that takes place towards the eastern side mainly that happens as a result of the uh, circulation patterns in low latitudes again he tried to explain that these trade winds are more or less stable in nature they lead to clear stable skies and 
uh, that is a result of the descending air towards the IT season. Now this usually exists between uh, up till the 25 degrees north and south. Next he tried to explain what happens in the high latitude patterns. When he tried to explain the high latitude patterns, he explained the concept of jet streams and Rossby waves again. And he said this is the circulation pattern that exists in the upper troposphere. So you have the formation of ridge and the trough. So you have trough as a zone of low pressure and ridge as a zone of high pressure. So you have the regions where you have the formations of maximum wind speed that takes place in this region and this would be the region of maximum uh, wind speed and most favorable regions for jet streams to occur. Now when he tried to explain the polar front, he explained the concept of vorticity, vorticity and he tried to explain that the zonal index is important to understand. So he explained two conditions of high and low zonal index. High zonal index usually leads to normal jet stream patterns. So you have a more or less uh, regular pattern that exists under uh, high zonal index. So zonal index basic, basically explains how strong uh, the wind is and how strong the circulation pattern exists in the real atmosphere. So this explains the high zonal wind region and then you have the low zonal wind region where you have the uh, polar winds pushing towards the equator and you have the formation of low pressure zones intermediately. So this leads to uh, maximum poleward transportation of energy and this is uh, much more stronger as compared to the uh, another one and you have the Rossby waves that exist under low zonal index. So with this we cover the basic three fundamental models of circulation the single cell model, the tricellular model and the Palman's con uh, conductive heat exchange model and the concept of Rossby waves and jet streams. We have already discussed these in further detail in the remaining sessions on climatology. We have talked about how the jet streams vary with the uh, pressure gradient and the Coriolis force. So you can refer to those lectures that would help you assist more in this lecture. Uh, we will be covering more topics related to climatology, specifically those related to uh, the applied section, the applied climatology in the further sessions. You can subscribe to our lectures for more updates. Have a good day ahead.